I'm Daniela Elena, and this is episode 49 of Historical Paranormal. In this episode, we'll discuss the origins of Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street's connection to a frightening phenomena that occurred with Hmong immigrants. In 2008, in an interview with Cinema Fantastique, Craven explained that he wanted a villain more primal than the loony maniacs acting as antagonists in his previous horror successes, The Last House on the Left and the hills have eyes. I wanted to do something that was tied into the deepest recesses of our subconscious. Craven said, I had a history in academics, so I knew there were certain things that were universal. An academic with a master's from John Hopkins University, Craven decided there is no greater time of psychological peace in human existence than during sleep. Running the comfort of the subconscious, he thought, would be the most horrifying thing possible. And then Craven read a series of curious newspaper reports. In 1981, news of a medical mystery began showing up in New York Times and Los Angeles Times. A few dozen people unexpectedly died in their sleep for unknown reasons. The men were young, healthy, and curiously enough, all of Asian descent. Papers dubbed the phenomenon Asian Death Syndrome, and the body count crossed 100 by the time Nightmare on Elm Street hit theaters. The condition went on to become known as the Less Racial Sudden Unexplained Death Syndrome, or Brigada Syndrome, and for quite a while confounded medical professionals as to its cause. In Craven's film, the victims were pastel-clad teenagers with 1980s personalities, a little more to worry about than hitting up the shopping mall. The victims of his sleep death phenomenon were Hmong refugee males who fled the killing fields in Cambodia during the genocide of the late 1970s. They survived the Khmer Massacre, fled to America, and acclimated to American life only to die in their sleep without possessing any noticeable health problems. When Craven read about this phenomenon in 1981, its curious nature was enough to prompt investigation by the CDC and was becoming a cultural concern for all Hmong people living in the United States. As it turned out, Hmong refugees in America weren't the only ones suffering from the condition. Healthy Asian men worldwide were dying in their sleep with inexplicable frequency, but the American refugees seemed to be particularly susceptible. Back in 2014, Wes Craven articulated a story about a specific Hmong refugee family which really pushed the idea of Freddy Cooper to the forefront of his imagination. The family fled the killing fields and came to America, and their young son began having terrible dreams. He told his parents he was afraid that if he slept, the thing chasing him would get him, so he tried to stay awake for days at a time. When he finally fell asleep, his parents thought the crisis was over. Then they heard screams in the middle of the night. By the time they got him, he was dead. He died in the middle of the nightmare, Craven said. Brigada syndrome is now detectable and preventable by modern medicine. But the question is why it so viciously attacked Hmong refugees in the 1980s and has never quite been nailed down. On a Nightmare on Elm Street DVD commentary, Wes Craven explains how he coupled the condition with his own life experiences to create Freddy Cougar. He said that as a boy, he was bullied at school by a boy named Fred. Kruger. So the name was simply applied. The effects of the boy clearly stuck with Craven, and the villain in his earlier film, The Last House on the Left, was also named Krug. As it is, the character of Kruger is a testament to the long-lasting detrimental effects bullying can have on children. Kruger's famous sweater was based on DC Comics' Plastic Man. The character could change shape, but you always knew it was him because the pattern of his clothing would be visible on whatever form he took. Kruger is the same way a shapeshifter, recognizable by his color patterns. The sweater covering was the result of a 1982 Scientific American article which found the two most abrasively clashing colors of the human retina are red and green. The result was a villain mask beneath scars and burns with a believable murder weapon. Any man could fashion a color capable of taunting and teasing his victims in a realistic, human way, but who kills in a sensational manner that wrecks even the impenetrable security of one's own mind. Craven said, Nature is full of stabbing instruments, claws, teeth, horns. I thought the claws of the bear must be buried somewhere in our subconscious. So the claw, which is from nature or animals, was combined with what is one of the most specifically human parts of our anatomy, which is our hands. The human hand is so much more dexterous than any other animals. Many scientists postulate that has gone hat in hand 
if you will, with the development of our brains. The more developed our brains have gotten, the more clever our hands have gotten, and vice versa. So that became the instrument, rather than anything that he would leave someplace and then pick up. It was something that he actually had on him. As for Freddy's hat, it was pulled from Craven's own past. He recounts the hat was the kind worn by men when I was a kid. And there was a particular man who scared me when I was little. He was a drunk that came down to the sidewalk and woke me up when I was sleeping. I went to the window wondering what the hell was there. He just did a mind fuck on me. He just basically somehow knew I was up there and he looked right into my eyes. I went back and hid for what I thought was hours. I finally crept back to the window and he was still there. Then he started walking almost half backward so that he could keep looking at me down to the corner and turned and I suddenly realized, my God, that's the direction of the entrance to our apartment building. I literally ran towards the front door and heard two stories down, the front door open. I woke up, my brother, he went down with a baseball bat and nobody was there. Probably the guy heard him coming and ran. He was drunk, having a good time. The idea of an adult who was frightening and enjoyed terrifying a child was the origin of Freddy. The combination of all of the above built a nightmare on Elm Street and constituted its iconic villain. The result is a film exploring the transition from childhood to adulthood and the effects of the consciousness on pain and truth. And as strange and fantastic as its horror may be, it all stems from reality, as most frightening horror concepts do. So I hope you enjoyed that explanation of how A Nightmare on Elm Street came to be. It's very disheartening that a lot of it had to do with real historical events as far as lung population dealing with sudden deaths of young men, as well as him pulling from his own experiences as a child that was mistreated and an experience with a drunk man. And it just goes to show that, like anything, when we look at horror in films, much of it, like urban legends, pulls from reality. It's a symbol of something. In this case, the scary transition from childhood to adulthood, which is adolescence, which is one of the most trying times for many of us. But I'd like to know what you guys think of this week's episode, and stay tuned for the final episode of